Hey guys, this is Virgil Donati for Pearl Brazil. I know you're gonna dig this. What kind of Terminator model are you? <laughs> <laughs> I collect snares from my favorite drummers. Yes. Would you like to give you yours? I don't carry them in my back pocket. Okay. <laughs> Not your first time here, though. It's not my first time, it's my third, in fact. Third? Yeah, I remember when I... I think you've been here in 96 or 97. Oh, I think it was 98. 98. And then 2005. Yeah, I missed you. I, I didn't... Oh, I was here in Curitiba yeah. in 98. Yes, that's right. I didn't... I didn't you know, I, I was starting and studying and didn't catch, you know, passed by and I saw... Oh, no. I didn't believe it, you know? So, well, I came back just for you. I yeah. know, man, you know. I've been watching your videos, I though. I, I, I just had to come back. To so now it's seven gigs here in Brazil, right? São Paulo, Curitiba, Novo Hamburgo, Florianópolis, Brasília, Fortaleza, and Duque de Caxias. Is that That's right. And apart from that, we also have some master classes. Nice. Do you have master classes? On extra days. Not no. here, no. Fortunate, no, though. Curitiba. Mm -hmm. No, but um, yeah, it's my most uh, comprehensive Brazilian tour yeah. out of the three, so I'm, I'm very, very uh, excited about it. Very lo I'm looking forward to it very much. We started last night in uh, Sao Paulo and it was um, 500 people. just amazing, yeah. <laughs> they were turning them back, but it, it, there was excitement and uh, a lot of anticipation and uh, yeah, it was very exciting, yeah. Nice. So I was reading about you and, and the, all you. You started very young at the age of three, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, I, I read that Ian Pace was your favorite. He was uh, well, at, you at know, the beginning, right? As I was growing up, yeah, you know, he was one of my one of my most influential. You know, of course, there were many other influences along the way. So then you you, you moved to the United States to study with Joe Morello, is that? Correct? No, 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 it wasn't Joe Morello. No, it was Philly Joe Jones. Philly Joe Jones, okay. And some other, some other plays, Horace Arnold and Murray Spivak, another one. Yeah, w one of my questions here is, why did you decide to move to the United States and how was the transition to that country? Well, my first trip to the US, on my first trip I was not only 19 years old and I stayed for a year and a half moved back to Australia and with the intention of quickly turning around and moving back to the US. Yeah. But um, things started taking off in Australia for me, you know, uh, and I ended up staying there another 15 years. So, yeah, in my mid-30s, I moved to the US finally for good. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a big transition, of course, you know, when you're established in one place. You're comfortable there, and uh, it, it, it's difficult to move. But I always had this ambition, this dream to, to go to the US where all the action is. Yeah, exactly. And um, it was important for my career because Australia is very isolated. There's some wonderful music there, a lot of, a lot of opportunities, but it's, it's very insulated, you know. Yeah, I know. Very hard to break out. So when you moved there, what, what was the first big artist that you? Played with uh, when I moved there, um, uh, I started. I was very fortunate to have some really good endorsement companies behind me. Uh, so you know, I, I was immediately working out there doing clinics, and, um, and slowly started getting a reputation amongst the musicians community. So I, I did. Uh, I think my first major tours were with Tribal Tech. Scott, Scott Henderson, sure. um, then um, Derek Shurian called me to yeah. do a record sure. and so I did his solo record and that became Planet X. 
you know, one thing led to another after that, and then shortly after that, it was Steve Vai. Steve Vai, yeah. Um, I did a G3. few tours with him. Yeah, I did a G3 tour, and then we did one of his world tours. And then um, continuing along the way with, you know, with, with Planet X, and, and I started putting my bands together and evolving that. So, um, and then working with Cab, which is Bunny Grinnell and Tony McCallum. Great and, uh, Ring of Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so all these things started branching out, you know, yeah. these is bands. It, is it true that you played with uh, Justo? Uh, I did a, a soundtrack recording uh, for Elfie, which uh, uh, included Mick Jagger and Joss Stone on, on oh, some okay. of the vocal tracks. Okay. But that was the extent of it. I didn't tour or work in, in a band. Yeah, and uh, the power drumming, uh, I, I had the VHS, mm -hmm. was back in Australia, or was already in the United States? That was in Australia. Yeah. Australia. Yeah. 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 You didn't have any jobs before being a professional drummer? No. No. I've always, um, always been, been a musician. Great. That's it. It's one of the biggest uh, uh, challenges for the young drummers coming, you know, they have well, to... Well, it is. Trying to make ends meet and yeah. trying to be a creative person, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it is a challenge and it's um, something that, that everyone aspires to, to, to be able to lead a, a creative life and be able to survive off it, you know. Yeah, exactly. And, um, well, I, I guess I've been fortunate in that way because I, I just started out with this, this passion and this belief that this is all there was for me in life. You know? So even from a young age, I used to start playing. I was doing gigs with my father, yeah. club gigs, and you know, playing in rest, just anything, you know, from a very young age. So growing up, the opportunities just present themselves. Yeah. You know, I guess maybe if you, if you begin later, it might be a little bit more difficult to, to make that work, but, um, um, you know, for some reason I, I was able to manage it so that I've, I've never had to look for alternative okay. uh, employment. About Pearl, when did you join the Pearl family? Was uh, it happened in stages. Um, it was very unusual for me because Pearl do not normally do uh, just hardware endorsements, but I think yeah. I was one of the few exceptions. But the Eliminator. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. early, uh, it, it may have been around 2000, mm -hmm. 1999, I can't remember the exact time, but I started playing their pedals. And we developed a really good relationship, good rapport, and um, it, after a few years, I believe maybe 2002, 2003, I made the transition to to the drums as well, and that's where. I'm so now you're playing a reference. Or or like now I'm works. playing um, everything I can get my hands on. <laughs> <laughs> I like. Um, I still have my original kits because they really? still sound great. I have a Masters MRX and uh, BRX, and I still use those for my recordings in my studio. I have it set up the MRX. Sometimes I swap it out for the BRX, and uh, on the on the road I've had many opportunities to play reference kits as well, as I'm doing on this Brazilian tour, nice. and uh, I enjoy playing those, you know. But there's still something about just that maple yeah. kit that I really like. How many drum sets do you have? <laughs> <laughs> How many drum sets? I have three still home back in Australia. Including a reference, actually, I do have one there. Um, I have two in the U.S. No, I have three in the U.S. Sorry, three there. I have one in Europe, which I pick up when I do my tours in Europe. Yeah. And I have one in India, which I pick up when I go and tour in India. Nice. So it's quite. I have them, uh, you know, str the strategically placed, <laughs> yes, of course. ready for action. N not one here in Brazil? 
No, no, <laughs> no, I don't have one here. If I start coming more often, perhaps. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Do you have any plans to put more videos on the website and DVDs? Uh, yeah, there's, there's always things in production. Um, we're revamping the website now. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm not sure when we'll relaunch, but um, we're working on that right now. In terms of, pri I'm working on a new solo record right now, which I'm very excited about. I have um, some great young players from LA, just amazing musicians. They're uh, really up and coming, amazing players. I've been writing a lot of music you know, for this and for other projects as well. And strangely enough, uh, I might mention uh, today, June 22nd, is a release date of a um, a track that I co-wrote with Mark Bowles for um, the Japanese Tsunami Relief, the Red Cross Appeal. Um, we decided to write this song, it features a lot of great uh, musicians and vocalists. Um, there is a Facebook page that you can find. I'll put on. And um, yeah, this song comes out today. And I wrote the music, Mark wrote the vocals. What does it take, in your opinion, what does it take to be a, a world class drummer? Uh, it, drumming is very demanding, very demanding physically, spiritually meaning psychologically and spiritually, kind of interrelated. It's, it's a tough instrument. There are many demands placed on us. Uh, uh, in term, yeah, like I said, uh, physically in terms of skills and just the output of energy. Um, the amount of practice involved and to be, you know, you know, very, very elite drummer anyway. You know. Of course, we, are, we all have different goals, different dreams in terms of music and what we want to achieve, but um, purely from the sense of being a great drum artist, um, it, it, it's a lot of work and uh, so you need a lot of faith and a lot of perseverance. It's, uh, you've got to push through a lot of barriers, you know. Absolutely. What's, what's your advice for the drummers that watching us. I, yeah, my, my advice is, is to believe in yourself and trust in your abilities, provided that you put in the time and the effort, and to just follow your instincts, you know, and maybe step outside the box a little, step out what's, what's normal, you know, yeah. and, um, and, and have faith in what you do. Funny question for great drummers. Oh, put me on the spot, huh? Everybody knows that you're not human. What, what kind of Terminator model are you? <laughs> uh, no, I'm no machine. I do not play fast. I do play strong, but uh, there are many more faster out there. It, it's not about speed, the fast. It's about the control and the ideas. That's basically what makes the speed interesting. Yeah. You can have just speed and it means nothing. You know? yeah, You've exactly. got to have the ideas to back it up. Do we ever question how fast Chopin or Mozart played scales on the piano? Or all these great musicians? No, it has nothing to do with music. Fast is exciting, but it's the substance. It's the music behind the fast that is what's interesting and what makes it. You know, so the same thing I think applies to drumming. It, it, it really doesn't matter to me how fast you can play, but, but it's, it's, it's the unmusical ideas, the intention behind it that's important. And even playing very slow sometimes can be exciting. Yeah.
yeah. I collect snares from uh, my favorite drummers. Yes. Would you like to give you my, yours? Uh, <laughs> you have a relationship with Pearl now, so I believe that they may be able to help you more than I can. Okay, <laughs> just kidding. I don't carry them in my back pocket. Okay. <laughs>